everybody my name is Kevin Bradley I'm a state extension weed scientist at the University of Missouri and in this virtual field day video we're gonna just briefly discuss one of the main questions I've been getting over the past several weeks and that has to do with off-target movement of 2,4-D and dicamba and their effects on soybean yield we'll start with off-target movement of dicamba obviously this is not new for Missouri or for a lot of states but I have still been getting a lot of calls this year and this issue is still out there. It may not be getting the publicity that it once was, but we still have many problems with off-target movement of dicamba. I'm a little bit surprised, I guess, that I still get the question about yield um, and, and yield effects, but that is the number one question I still receive is, do you have any new information on soybean yield loss to dicamba? Uh, can you tell me what kind of yield loss I'm going to experience? And uh, I guess my surprise of, of that question is just based on the fact that we have 40 or 50 years worth of data on soybean yield loss from dicamba and that we really just do not have any magical way to walk out into a field and know what dose of dicamba contacted the plant. If we knew that, we could definitely tell you what kind of yield loss to expect. But let's look at what the data does say. So rather than me show a bunch of results from our own studies, and we have plenty of them, and there's many, many weed scientists all over who have done uh, this kind of work, I'm just gonna show you one slide of data from one uh, meta-analysis. And a meta-analysis is just something we do in science uh, that is uh, an attempt to take all the studies that have been published on a particular in issue and summarize them across numerous environments. And that's what Dr. Nis did at the University of Wyoming several years ago on this whole topic of dicamba and soybean yield loss. And so, as you can see here, Andrew is summarizing 11 previously published studies from a pretty, pretty long time span. And overall, what these studies have shown is fairly consistent. Basically what we know about the effects of dicamba on soybean is that if the dicamba contacts the soybean when they are in the R1 or beginning flowering stage or later, that those soybean are much more likely to experience yield loss. The extent of yield loss that is likely to occur will depend on the dose of dicamba that contacts them and also to some extent the environmental conditions that occur following the drift event. As you can see here in his study across all these different experiments, a 5% yield loss occurred with a dicamba dose somewhere around three one hundredths of an ounce of product per acre. And it's important to note that this was the rate that caused the 5% yield loss when the drift events occurred at the flowering stage of soybean. On the other hand, it took about six times as much, although again, relatively speaking, we're still talking about very, very little amounts, but it took about two tenths or just under two tenths of an ounce of product per acre to cause the same level of yield loss when the drift event occurred to soybean that were in the earlier vegetative stages of growth. And this is one of those main things that we have come to know about dicamba and soybean yield loss. Another thing that we really don't know for sure is what happens to soybean yield if you get drifted onto more than once. And this has been a real world issue particularly in those areas that have experienced uh, high adoption rates of the extend trait. So as a result of funding from the United Soybean Board, a group of weed scientists from around the U.S. have been looking at this issue for the past several years. I'm just going to show you our data from two years here in Columbia, but I expect some of the data will be coming out from around all of these sites in, in the near future. So our results show as you can see here in this slide, uh, first of all, that some of those concepts that I just discussed about single drift events, they still hold true. Um, we do see um, that soybean are more susceptible to yield loss when they are exposed in those early reproductive stages compared to the vegetative stages. But the purpose of this trial was really about multiple drift events, and as you can see here, if we start experiencing multiple drift events, for example, perhaps at R1 and R3 or whatever the combination is, then the effects, of yield, the effects on yield loss are often compounded and much more dramatic than just one single exposure as you might have 
expected. So although we haven't had anywhere close to the number of calls with the two 4D products, the Enlist products, we have had some and we also wanted to cover that in this in this brief video. Um, I'll just say right from the outset, um, again, very, very few calls, relatively speaking, to what we experienced with Dicamba over the past several years. And in every case that I've uh, been made aware of, it's usually, um, a, well, at least it looks like a physical drift event that occurred. It's not injury from the, di from the 2,4-D products across the whole field. Uh, like what we've seen with Dicamba over the past several years. So in other words, at least all signs at this particular point uh, seem to indicate that we don't have a major problem with volatility, but you can still have problems with just making a poor decision when winds, winds too high at the time of application. In every case I've been aware of, that's what what's happened. So what do the results uh, show as it relates to um, 2,4-D injury on soybean yield loss. Well, in a nutshell, it's, it's a much better picture, if you will. Uh, we don't have anywhere close to the level of sensitivity of soybean to 2,4-D as we do dicamba. In other words, they're able to tolerate quite a bit more. Um, there, are, there have been uh, meta-analysis conducted on uh, the effects of 2,4-D on soybean yield as well. And I'm just going to give you a few kind of high level statements and overall conclusions from that work that was conducted by Egan et al. back in 2014. So first of all, um, we do know that the, the sensitivity of soybean is still uh, more when those plants are in the reproductive stages compared to the vegetative, regardless of whether it's dicamba or 2,4-D. So we still see that occurring. Secondly, as I've already said, it, it takes quite a bit before you actually experience yield loss. In our own studies, it, it takes somewhere around one-tenth of the normal use rate before you start to experience yield loss with soybean. And again, obviously that's going to vary depending on what stage the soybeans are in and the environmental conditions after application. That's just a general statement and general rule of thumb, but uh, you know, at one-tenth that's about you know one whole level higher um, than anything we would have uh, ever seen with dicamba if not several magnitudes higher as we did with dicamba we also conducted a multi-exposure study to 2,4-D the Enlist products the 2,4-D choline product this again was a result of funding from the United Soybean Board and uh, is a multi-state study in this case, we're only in the second year of the trial though, so we only have results from our location last year. And what you can see here on the screen is that basically, in a nutshell, none of these treatments cause any significant difference in yield loss compared to the non-treated control, regardless of how many exposures of Enlist 1 that occurred, which is fairly uh, significant, um, that we never saw yield loss even though we might have gone uh, as much as three or four application. So it just does back up the fact that they are able to tolerate quite a bit of 2,4-D. I hope you've been enjoying these virtual field day videos as much as I have. I am tremendously proud of my staff and students for putting all these together. Uh, it has been uh, quite a year to say the least. We'd much rather meet with you in person, but this is what we've got to do at this time. So with that in mind, I just say, please stay safe, stay healthy. Don't hesitate to, to contact us through email or calls, just like always, and uh, keep up with us on social media. Thanks everybody.